and welcome to Just Book Special with Catherine Bu, Pulitzer Prize winning American journalist and New Yorker reporter whose remarkable book Behind the Beautiful Forevers is an account of nearly four years spent observing life in a Mumbai slum. It's called, its subtitle is Life, Death and Hope in an Indian Undercity. One of the most remarkable pieces of journalism this year in fact, for many a year, life behind behind the beautiful forevers is is your great odyssey into the underbelly of of urban Indian life, into Indian poverty and corruption. The two things being inextricably interlinked. Uh, what really triggered off your deep interest in investigating Indian poverty? In fact, coming to India and focusing on a small piece of, of an Indian undercity in Mumbai? Well, the short, simple answer is that I fell in love in 2001 with my husband Sunil Kilnani, the political historian. And so I, I had been, when I met him, I'd been working for many years on questions of poverty and how people get out of it in the United States. And so I would be coming to India from my own intensive work in housing projects in Oklahoma City or uh, trailer parks in South Texas and suddenly I was here in India and I was asking the same questions that I had in my own country. Who gets out of poverty and who doesn't and why? And I was, so, you know, I was, I was meeting many people and everybody seemed to have an answer to that question and people were saying now that, that India is growing so fast everything has changed for the poor or people were saying nothing at all has changed for the poor and I I started to feel after a while that the people who were talking about what was going on in historically poor communities might not have been spending a lot of time in those communities. And I thought maybe, you know, it took me many years to decide to write this book, but I felt that maybe if I spent a long period of time in one of those communities that I'd have a better answer to my questions. In your afterword, you describe at length not only your extraordinary reporting technique, but also the fact that when you began to look at Indian poverty or a microcosm of it, okay. uh, it was the impetus came from a kind of impatience and irritation of not just the widely held popular Indian view, but world view of why or how the poorest live and survive in India. What bothered you? Well, I think there's a problem in poverty writing in my own country, in India, in Africa. Also, there's, there's a, a way, there are two kinds of writing about poverty. One is sensationalistic and the other is sentimental. So that what, what you get as a reader are these poignant snapshots of children and they're brushing away flies from their eyes and they're barefoot and, you know, these sort of very passive portraits of people in squalid settings. and. To me, what's interesting about people in low-income communities, it's not their physical setting. It's not that their houses are flimsy. It's what they're doing to try to get out of poverty. Um, and because people in low-income communities are not passive. Many of them are waking up every day and trying to figure out how to give a better life to their children. And I wanted to record that. Hundreds and thousands of impoverished, desperate, poor communities uh, throughout India hundreds and thousands right. of slums in urban metropolitan mm. India, hundreds of slums in Mumbai. Right. How did you choose this particular slum? How did you decide? Well, in, in some respects, Anawadi chose me and the people of Anawadi chose me because I began, I, I, it, when I started out this project, I was spending time in many slums all over Mumbai. And Anawadi at first was interesting to me because of its striking physical setting. It was this small community that was surrounded by luxury hotels, uh, a Hyatt, an Intercontinental, a uh, Sheraton Grand Murata. Um, but what kept me going back, what, you know, if you work on projects the way I do for a long time, sometimes many years, you absolutely have to be involved in the lives of the people who you're meeting in those communities. Otherwise, you just can't keep going back. Do you have the Indie TV Profit app? All the markets, all the news and your own homemade, ready-made portfolio available there for you. We will right now answer what you should sell, what you should buy when markets are down. Download at IndieTVProfit.com slash apps. Get the best app from the channel you trust.